Hey, I'm PJ Trudeau with the Association of Corporate Counsel, a Vice President and Chief Administrative Officer. And I'm here today with Stuart Hirsch, one of our career coaches, who is going to talk with us about networking for your career and how to do that naturally, authentically, and effectively. Stuart, can you tell us how do we network? What is it that we should be doing that makes it something that's effective, but that we feel like we're able to walk away uh, with something that you can follow up on uh, in the future. And it's not something where I know for a lot of us, it's, it's a much more challenging situation when we know we have to network. Can you make that question any larger? <laughs> so let's, uh, let's, let's kind of break it down a little bit if we can. Let's start with um, why are we even networking? Because I think that's a big place to start, an important place to start. You know, most of my career was built on networking. Um, you know, as a lawyer initially, and then firms and in-house, and then um, when I started coaching on for business development and then executive and leadership and career coaching, um, the the reason we network is because there are just lots and lots of opportunities, and they're constantly coming at us, and people miss them because they're focused on the wrong thing. So, these principles of networking that I'd like to share that we talked about in the, in before is that uh, there's really only two things in the world. Uh, I only I view the world as really only having two things. How we view the world, our mindset, and then what we do in the world, our actions. So if we start out with our mindset, if you have the right mindset, then networking becomes a very different animal. Most people find networking to be uncomfortable or um, intimidating. But if you think of the world in terms of being a caring and curious person that we that you all are, you know, everyone, many of us are, many people are. If you if you have the mindset of being caring, caring and curious about other people, um, then it's not about you. It takes it takes all the pressure and all the uh, uh, concern, and strain, and and, and uh, stress off of the off of the networker who is trying to meet new people. And so, being caring and curious is something that comes really naturally for lawyers, especially the curious and and. Uh, Every lawyer I know is very caring about other people. So you ask yourself two questions, like how does that manifest in the real world? The manifest by saying two things, thinking two things when you meet somebody. And it's not just people you meet in a networking event, it's people you meet while waiting for a plane, it's people you meet on a Zoom call, uh, like we're in now, or people that you meet um, you know, even standing in a line. Uh, think about if you get into a conversation, what do I know or who do I know that could be helpful to you or someone that you know and care about? And the corollary is, what do you know and who do you know that could be helpful to me or someone that I know and care about? So when you put it in those terms, you're actually meeting people and, and, and in order to find out the answer to those two questions, you have to you have to ask questions. You don't say, who do you know or what do you know that can be helpful to me? You say, tell me about you. Let me hear about you. I'd love to know what you do, how you do it. I'd love to understand more about what's important to you. And in asking those questions about the other person, and people do like to talk about themselves, most people do, uh, you're going to find out who they know or what they know that could be helpful to you or someone that you know and care about. And you're also going to find out and be able to discern who you know or what you know that could be helpful to them just by listening to the answers to the questions when people talk about themselves and some of the things that they're facing and some of the issues that are going on for them. And, and you just never know. So um, I want to kind of break out of this concept that people have about what networking is. Let me say what it's not. It's not, hi, I'm Stuart. I'm a business development coach. Do you need some help? I mean, that's not networking. Or I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, in-house counsel looking for work. That's broadcasting. That's telling other people what you want. And sometimes it's shameless self-promotion. So it's not, it's neither of those things. It's thinking about how you can be helpful to other people. And um, I actually wrote a blog called Reduce Stress, Stop Selling, Start Helping. Just help people. And it just is such a relief. Some great points. How do you, when you are in a situation where uh, you're at a conference or you're somewhere where you have the ability to, as they say, work a room. How do you go about doing that from a networking perspective? Well, first thing is um, at, a, at a conference, it doesn't, it's not quite the same as uh, just going even to a luncheon, but at a luncheon, for example, get there early. 
Uh, and because um, people don't arrive in those things in clumps. When you go to a conference, try and get there early. When you walk into the room, the rooms at the conference where there are, where there's a speaker or there's you know other people that are going to be coming in, uh, go to the room a little bit early because it gives you an opportunity to talk to people and learn about them. What brings you to this session? Uh, what brings you to this conference? Why do you come for the speaker? Asking lots of questions and begin to un understand their name and ask them questions about themselves so that they'll tell you and that will give you some answers as to where to go next. Um, think of yourself as, uh, I like to say, think of yourself as a host. Like what's the most important thing for a host is to make other people feel comfortable. If you're spending your time making other pe people feel other people feel comfortable, you're gonna spend a lot of time worrying about how you feel. Uh, so, so the first thing you do is you, uh, you go to the event, try and get there early, get to see who else is there that you might wanna meet. Even before you go to the event, if there's people that are going that you know, you can certainly reach out to them in advance and say, are you gonna be there? I'd love to see you for a few minutes. But remember, you're, not, you're going there to see some of the people you already know, but you're also going to meet new people, especially if you're job hunting or, um, seeking to meet new people. If you spend all your time with some people you know, then you're defeating the purpose if, if your goal, one of your goals is to meet new people. Also think of people that you might wanna be helpful to because everybody you meet could help somebody in your life uh, or somebody else you meet at that event. Uh, so uh, meet people, ask them questions like, what do you do? Tell me more about it, uh, what you do. Uh, where do you do it? You like what you do? How do you get to do what you do? And uh, what do you do before? And what do you think you might do next? Those kinds of questions will be really helpful in terms of getting um, information from the other person. And um, again, if you think of yourself as a host, you'll be able to maybe introduce people to other people that are there. Uh, and you can even ask for the kind of people, if they meet, that you would like to meet, like categories of people. Um, and then the two hardest things are getting into a conversation, getting out of a conversation. Okay, so you want me to go there? Please. Uh, yeah. Okay. So to get into a conversation, you walk up to somebody, especially if they're standing by themselves, and you say hello, introduce yourself, and then ask them about themselves. Tell me about you. Tell me about your company. Tell me about what you're doing. Um, and then uh, getting after you have that little bit of conversation about them and you want to end the conversation because the goal, one time I was teaching this and I asked, what's the goal of this? And the person said, uh, one of the people said, to, to keep the conversation going as long as you can. I said, no, that's really not the purpose because that's going to bore both of you. Um, what you really want to do is learn enough about the person to see whether or not you have enough in common that you would like to continue the conversation. Uh, and so once you've determined that, if you decide you do want to continue the conversation, say, I love meeting you. And I'd really like to get to um, have a little, spend a little more time together, but there's so many people we want to meet at the conference, or uh, we have to get to the next session, or it's time for lunch, or whatever it happens to be, uh, and say, would you like to continue this conversation at a later time, uh, even after the conference? We'd like to connect on LinkedIn. And in LinkedIn, it's so easy. You just can do it right there in the moment. And, it's, and then uh, make sure you note that you've done that so you won't forget that you connected to the person on LinkedIn so you'll follow up later. And, uh, and if you don't, if there's no reason you can think of, say to the person, it's been really nice meeting you and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the conference. Or if I meet somebody that I think will be right for you, I'd be really happy to introduce you. And um, the last thing is when you're done, and this is like the most important things, you have to follow up. You know, this is not a let's do lunch where it never happens. So if you want to network, you have to set a next step that's real, that has some time bound to it. Like, let's get together or let's have a Zoom call or a phone call in the next couple of weeks. Do you want to put something on the calendar to, uh, to lock it down? You can always move it. But if it's not in the calendar, you know, most of us live by our calendars now. So uh, set a next step. And as I said, and then review what next steps you've set, which means you have to write it down somewhere or put it in your phone so you remember what it is and then do that follow-up and do the follow-up shortly after. I was just, I was at a, an event last night and I sent uh, a few notes to people telling them how much I enjoyed it and really appreciate it. And there's a couple of people I want to follow up with. And I said, I'd like, would you uh, like to continue our conversation? But if you don't do that, it doesn't happen. And then it gets stale and then we feel bad about it. So 
One, one way to not do that is to do it right away. And we know that it's so important to make sure that you're developing and building these your network before you are in a position where you may feel like you need to lean on your network or reach out to your network if there's something oh, that absolutely. you need. How important is it to continue maintaining uh, these relationships, like you said, making sure that you follow up initially, uh, but after that, what is what's that timeline look like or what does what does that look like when you want to maintain uh, that relationship longer term? Again, you never know who you may be able to help or reach out to if you need guidance on something. Well, um, I, you have to make a determination as to how often you think it makes sense to meet with somebody, and you don't have to do that by yourself. You can do that with the other person. You can say, "Well, how often should we stay in touch?" Uh, oftentimes, if I'm any a conversation, I or the other person will say, uh, should we put something on the calendar for the next meeting? Uh, just, just so we stay connected. So if you do that and you say you want to stay connected and you both want to stay connected, just get something onto your calendar. If uh, How often depends. Uh, sometimes it's every month. If it's someone you want to be close to, closer to, if sometimes every other month, sometimes every quarter, sometimes half a year. Uh, if you don't do that, it's going to get stale. You're going to forget. And maybe a year later, you say, oh, I haven't seen you since the last conference. You want to reconnect now and you may have to do that in person. But it's always better if you want to stay in touch with somebody to, to make sure that it happens. Why would you do that? Because uh, one, it's nice. It's fun. It's interesting. People are interesting. You get to know them better. And uh, if you want to be a little self-serving about it, yeah, you never know if um, if you're going to need that person, if you want to be other serving, you never know if that person's going to need you or someone in your life. So it, it works for everybody if you stay in touch. And now you don't have to stay in touch every day, but you know, you know how sometimes you haven't talked to someone for three or four or six months and it seems like, you know, yesterday. I just had one of those conversations today, of like three months, and it was just like yesterday. So, but you have to do, you have to make the effort. Absolutely. Thank you for such great points and being able to really kind of distill down what it is that we need to do to ensure that we are uh, networking in a way that is truly authentic and is going to be something that's effective for us uh, long term. Uh, certainly do appreciate uh, all of your insight and thank you so much for providing this uh, information for us from a career standpoint. Thank you, PJ. It's been a pleasure to be here with you.